Hi everyone, Ronnie here. You're listening to Clean With Me, the podcast where I talk you through cleaning your house. Thanks for joining me. In today's episode, we're going to be cleaning the house in a different order. I like to do this once in a while because if you only ever clean along with one of my episodes, you're going to start with the kitchen, get a lot done in there, and then kind of get progressively less done throughout the rest of the house. So the solution for that is to listen to another episode, but let's face it, a lot of us run out of steam after an hour of cleaning. So in today's episode, we are going to start in your bedroom And we're also going to spend a lot of time in the bathrooms just to kind of cover the bases. Now, if your bedroom's a total disaster, check out one of my dedicated bedroom episodes and just spend a, a whole episode in there. Anyway, let's get right into the episode. You're going to start out in your room today. Um, first thing you might want to do is make your bed unless there's somebody still sleeping in it. Okay. Um, A lot of times, if your room is a mess, you could have a tendency to think um, the bed not being made is the least of my problems in this room. But there is just something about making your bed and then looking at your room in a whole new light. It just, making your bed is for your room as doing the dishes is for your kitchen. It It gets things going. So trust me on that and make your bed. Um, Once you make your bed, of course, you're going to want to remove clutter from the floor, from surfaces, and just start straightening up your room. My bedroom recently got a major overhaul. Of course, I still need to make my bed and straighten up my room for today. I'm recording this in the morning And I'm recording this episode in light of what I plan to do after recording it. So it is based on my own session that I have planned today. And yes, my room got a recent overhaul, but that doesn't mean I don't need to make my bed, um, clear a few glasses, and vacuum the room. Okay? But I'm going to give you a few more minutes than just that in case your room is in disarray, which it may be. No judgment here. The important thing is that you make your bed first. That helps you build momentum. And you can even put clean laundry on top of your freshly made bed as an incentive to fold it later and put it away. That's one That's one option. But I want you to make your bed and then clean your room. So While you're working on whatever needs to be done in your bedroom, I will talk about what has me motivated this week. Hopefully this person doesn't ever listen to this episode, but um, I met a new friend. I'll try to keep it general. I met a new friend. She gave me a tour of her house and right away I was just thinking, um, the back bedrooms of my house need serious attention, my kids' room and mine. This is before I did the, did the recent overhaul. And I, having someone over or the thought of having someone over is sometimes necessary to kind of get, get you going on things you've been procrastinating on. And I've been busy. I'm not saying that there's just no reason why my bedroom shouldn't be perfect or whatever. I have a lot on my plate. But let's face it, no matter how busy we are, Cleaning is a part of life, and we all want to have a house that we could take somebody through. So that's kind of the theme of today's episode. Um, My room ended up getting a major overhaul a couple days ago in light of that recent tour I was on. And it was the the biggest overhaul. Uh, It was the most I had done in my room since getting ready for Christmas. So it was kind of a big deal. And I really didn't even finish the project getting ready ready for Christmas. Um, There was more I could have done. And then I found out 
that my mom and her husband were going to be staying at a hotel just because we had a lot of people here and whatnot. But I could have done more. I kind of stopped before I was completely done with it. So this time it got a thorough overhaul. And I've I've talked to this. I'll talk about this while you're working in your room. I've talked about this before, but there are certain things that sidetrack me when I start to deep clean my bedroom. Um, I will get focused on the clothing. I'll start talking about decluttering. Okay, my husband walked in unexpectedly and that kind of threw me off. I don't like him to listen to me when I'm recording. Anyway, I will start to focus on this bin of clean laundry that I have in my room. I will start to think about decluttering my wardrobe, but this time I was hyper-focused on actually cleaning the room. And so I just basically chose a corner and started working in there. And like I talk about a lot, I got a bag and a box. I ended up not needing the box. I always say like to have a bag for trash and then a box for donations. I really didn't need the box. I had a box ready, didn't use it um, because mainly I just needed to get rid of trash. Um, one of our dogs hoards things under the bed. And so what I did need was a broom to reach under the bed and pull everything out. Super irritating. And we had just done it recently. My husband was like, I just did that like a couple months ago. And there's already this much trash. And he's like, I know it's not us. It's this dog. I'm like, yeah, it's a dog. So anyway, um, we pulled, or not we, I did. But I pulled out all the trash from under my bed. And of course, there were items that were not trash. You know, the stray shoe that got kicked under there. Um, somehow my husband's missing drill was under there. And I don't think the dog did that but most of it was trash I think the dog literally pulls things out of the trash and takes it under my bed so anyway but that dog is my teenage daughter's beloved pet so I have my dog and then she has her dog <laughs> so the dog's a fixture but I'm, I'm really just trying to keep her out of my bedroom because that's super irritating but anyway you may not have that same thing, but everybody has different issues in their bedroom. So I pulled everything out from under the bed after I had finished cleaning a corner in my room that needed attention. So maybe there's a corner where you have a lot of clutter building up. Maybe you need to pull things out from under your bed. But the key is to just focus on an area to have a bag for trash for sure, focus on an area and just kind of work your way around the room until you have cleaned up the entire room. And in this episode, we're not going to have time to do as deep of an overhaul. Again, I have episodes that are dedicated to the bedroom, but I'm just kind of talking about what I did recently, hoping that gets you motivated. And also when I'm cleaning my room, I kind of include the part of my bathroom, okay, um, that's kind of open with my room. But we will talk about bathrooms later in this episode. We are going to deep clean a bathroom or two in this episode because I do plan to clean my bathrooms today. So anyway... In light of the fact that a new friend gave me a tour and that I'm planning to have her over at some point, I did an overhaul in my bedroom and I had my kids do theirs. So, and I'm, today I'm planning to detail the bathrooms, which, yeah, it's it's been longer than it should have been since I've cleaned them. If you're new to the show, we mainly start in the kitchen. And that's what most episodes will be because a lot of us get bored while doing dishes, procrastinate on doing dishes, don't like doing dishes, things like that. And getting that over with early gets gets your house looking a lot better quick. And then, of course, we also focus on straightening the front entrance or the front room of your home, 
we do those things early on because let's face it, most visitors are not getting a tour of the back bedrooms. But if you do decide to somewhat give someone a tour of your entire house, that will provide some much needed motivation. So if you don't have that happening soon, pretend you do. Okay. By the way, I'm on a staycation this week. Um, my kids are on spring break. I requested the week off. We had a few things going on this week as well. So each day I kind of have a to-do list of things that do not involve cleaning the house, but at the same time, I am, um, getting caught up on deep cleaning, which I'm excited about. For example, I drove like a hundred miles to shop for a dress for my daughter for an upcoming event. And it's just, it's been a fun week so far and I've still got a few, few days left. We're going to spend another five minutes in your bedroom or a bedroom you're responsible for. Again, I don't normally spend a lot of time in the bedroom in these episodes. We normally start in the kitchen, but this, I want this to be a well-rounded program So if you've listened to a few episodes in a row where you start in the kitchen, um, today might be a good time to do things in the opposite order. So that's the thinking behind this. And this episode is also based on my plans for today, which are going to start in the bedroom. I'm planning to finish my bedroom and then um, deep clean both bathrooms. Once in a while, you need to take a day off or a week off to get caught up on your life, and that's kind of what I'm doing. I've got, I've got a to-do list, and I'm chipping away at things I need to finish doing my taxes, for example. And I'm definitely all for vacations where you travel, but ideally you need both. My husband and I were planning to travel this week. But he had taken some days off from being sick or something, and it was too soon for him to take time off again. So my vacation turned into a staycation, but I'm enjoying every minute of it. Again, be working in your room. Stay focused. The main goal is to remove clutter from the floor, including around the edges of your room, and to clear surfaces. One of the things I did during my bedroom overhaul was cleared off the dresser that my TV sits on. It's like a giant dresser that I use as a TV stand. Wiped that down, dusted off the TV. So that's something that might need to be done in your room. I also organized my home office. So just be working on your room and then either at the end of this segment or at the end of the episode, you're going to want to finish it off by sweeping or vacuuming. My bedroom has carpeting and I'm planning to vacuum once I make my bed and do a quick straighten. The deep cleaning's already done at my house. I read a book years ago that recommended that you decorate your bedroom first before the rest of the house because that's where you wake up. The first thing you see is, you know, your surroundings in your bedroom. So just a thought there, maybe while you're working on it, be thinking about decorating if you haven't already done so. The way I decorated my room is I kind of changed the motif in my home and used some pictures that I had been hanging up in my living room at the last few houses, use those to decorate my bedroom. And then I frequently will get a new like comforter set, but I always just pick something that goes with the, the uh, prints that I have hanging in my room. So decorating my bedroom was pretty easy, uh, using things that I used in other parts of the house. And that kind of allowed me to get some new stuff for the living room. So just a thought there on decorating. Decorating helps keep you motivated. But at the same time, it's okay to have a simple bedroom. I mean, 
if there's going to be a room in your house where you don't hang a lot on the walls and it's kind of simple, that could be your bedroom because probably nobody sees it. But at the same time, it's nice to have things that you love on the walls. So um, just some thoughts there. Um, another thing I have in my bedroom, I have a bulletin board that's just kind of an inspiration board for me. I have some different certificates and accomplishments that I have, and I have a, a scripture verse, and then I have some pictures of my youngest kids and my grandkids, basically who I'm working for <laughs> in, you know, everything that I do is, you know, to try to give them a better future. So that's, that's something that I see when I first wake up and it makes me happy. Anyway, be working on, oh, wait, that's enough time in the bedroom. Let's move on. Okay, so it's time to deep clean a bathroom or bathrooms. Again, I'm doing things in a different order in this episode. If that goes against the grain, um, try another episode. Most of them start with the kitchen. But for a lot of us, we need to focus on the bedroom and bathrooms when we still have a lot of energy. And it could be a different cleaning session than when we do the kitchen and living areas. So the first thing you're going to need to do in any bathroom is clear everything out. Um, there, there are going to be things that could be in your way while cleaning. Could be items on the countertop, could be a waste basket, um, bath mats or rugs, things like that. Um, maybe a bathroom scale, you're going to move all that stuff out into the hallway or into the bedroom. Um, so you're going to want to clear the countertop and the scale. If you don't keep anything on the back of your toilet tank, this is what I used to do when I didn't have anything there. I would move the items from the bathroom counter and set them on the tank, like the toothbrush holder, the toothpaste, you know, whatever. I'd set it there while I cleaned, but now what I do is I set that stuff when I'm in my kid's bathroom anyway, I set that stuff in the cupboard underneath, but wherever you need to set things, you just need to move things out of the way because of course, when you clean your bathroom mirror, you're going to be spraying something. You might be spraying something on the countertops too, depending on the cleaning products you use, but you need to get those items out of the way. And that includes clearing the floor, your little bath rugs and your, your waste basket and possibly scale. So anyway, let's get everything cleared out. Maybe you need to put those um, bath mats or rugs into the washing machine. Um, the next step is to wipe down your, well, maybe put something in the toilet bowl and let that chemical start to do its work. Of course, you want the area to be well ventilated. You're going to need to either open your window or keep the bathroom door open um, so that the area, if there's no window, so that the area is well ventilated. Put something into your toilet bowl, maybe give it a swish and then let that product sit there for a while while you work on your countertop, your sink, or sinks plural, if it's a dual sink. And um, you're going to want to scrub scrub those surfaces. And the show isn't really about cleaning products. So, you know, just use what you like. But a lot of times I like to use a bleach powder like Comet or Ajax for the sink, the white part of the, the sink and to whiten that and then something to scrub with and then I I have kind of some unique tile that really looks best if you clean it with glass cleaner so when I clean the actual I'll scrub out the sink but when I clean the faucets and faucet handles and countertop I will use a glass cleaner which is the same product that I use on the mirrors okay and at my house, 
I use the Windex that has vinegar just because we have hard water. So that seems to be the best choice for us. But of course, if you have granite countertops, you, you're going to be using something that other than glass cleaner, you're going to need to use something that's safe on your granite. So be cleaning your sink, your faucets, your countertop, and then your mirror. I'll give you a few minutes to work on that. While you're in the bathroom, it's good to think about storage solutions. Um, did it take you forever to clear off your bathroom counter? If so, maybe you need a little tray or a little makeup holder because I know not everybody has makeup drawers. We don't in our guest bathroom, but in my bathroom, there are plenty of drawers. So there's no need to store much on the counter. I mean, we have our toothbrush holders and our little hand soaps. But, you know, maybe a few decorations because it's a super um, long countertop. But we don't need to keep much there. And I think I do have a basket that there's a brush in. But anyway, um, yeah. In my kid's bathroom, since there is a cupboard underneath the sink, and I know not even, not even everybody has that. Some people have a pedestal sink. But in that cupboard underneath, I have containers for the kids to put their various items in. So there are currently three kids sharing that bathroom and they have little products that they use and, you know, hairstyling tools for my daughter and things like that. And there's little boxes underneath and, um, some of them are plastic caddies that I've purchased. Some of them are shoe boxes, but I've basically just filled that whole area with these rectangular containers and it's a great solution. If you're cleaning two bathrooms at a time, maybe you need to run to the other bathroom, put some toilet bowl cleaner in the toilet, give it a swish, clear everything out, clean the countertop, clean the sink, clean the mirror. I'll give you a few minutes for that. If it's just one bathroom, you can do some detail work like cleaning the light switches, the baseboards, okay, organizing wiping down walls, wiping down the door, especially a kid's bathroom door needs to be wiped down inside and out. If, if it's a white door and it's your kid's bathroom, there are going to be some grimy fingerprints. I read an article that said some often forgotten areas in the bathroom include the toilet handle, the toilet base, the curtain rod, the light fixtures, and the toothbrush holder. So since we haven't gotten to the toilet yet, let's talk about your toothbrush holder. Do you need to run that thing through the dishwasher? If so, now's the time to run it to the kitchen or maybe have it soak in the sink if you don't have a dishwasher. Um, when you do go to clean your toilet, you're going to want to wipe down the seat um, the back of the seat, the rim. Um, if you're kind of grossed out by getting down, you know, up close and personal with your toilet, um, put on one of your old COVID masks or wrap a bandana around your face or, you know, purchase some dust masks. Um, that can make it feel less uncomfortable where, you, you know, your mouth and nose are protected while you're working. So, that that's a possible solution if you have an aversion to kind of kneeling down over the toilet but you're going to want to clean every possible part of the toilet once you've cleaned the seat the back of the seat the rim scrubbed out the bowl and everything um, and you may need to use a pumice stone if there's a like a ring from hard water or some discoloration up under the rim also keep in mind that you can remove your toilet seat if you're having trouble kind of cleaning around those bolts where it's attached. You can remove that. I'm a fan of using disinfecting wipes on the toilet, but some people may be allergic to it. So if that's the case, you're going to want to clean the seat with something else that is gent gentler or more natural. But at our house, I use the disinfecting wipes on the seat. 
and of course when you clean the exterior of the toilet bowl you want to get down on the floor and clean all around the base of the toilet and while you're down there that's when you're going to scrub the floor around it and even the wall behind the toilet okay even if you don't have little boys missing the toilet which we don't um that area does collect dirt dust and grime and you're probably not going to effectively clean that with a mop. So you're going to want to scrub that while you're down on your hands and knees. Again, if you're cleaning two bathrooms at a time in this episode, once you're done shining up your toilet, don't forget, of course, the um, the tank and the flusher handle. When you're done, maybe run to a bathroom and clean another one. If you only have one bathroom, Do some deep cleaning in that bathroom while we're talking about cleaning bathrooms. And I realize that I can talk faster than you clean. Don't expect to keep up with me perfectly. It's always a challenge when I talk you through the step-by-step of a process because unless I'm literally cleaning while I talk about it, it's really hard to gauge the time, keep track of the time. But the important thing with listening to this episode, and there's no right or wrong way to listen to it, but the way to clean along with the episode is just to try to work in the room or the zone that I'm talking about. And right now that's bathrooms. And you know what needs to be done in your bathroom. So be working in your bathrooms. Of course, after the toilets are done, um, it's time to either clean out a bathtub or shower or sweep and mop the floors. And sometimes in my smaller bathroom, I don't mop. I just clean the floor by hand because it's, it's a really small bathroom. In my bedroom, I have the garden tub with separate shower. So although I do clean tubs and showers while I'm naked in them, like actually showering, I've told you that before. That's typically what I do. One thing that I do during a bathroom cleaning session is clear the area around my bathtub because I have some decorative candles and a house plant and things like that, but clutter also accumulates. Um, empty shampoo bottles, razors that I'm not using, things like that. So I typically need to clear the kind of ledge around the tub and then wipe down that area because you get like soap scum and whatever. And, you know, sometimes there's an empty water bottle left by my husband or whatever, you know, so there could be some trash that needs to be tossed. Um, from around your garden tub if you kind of set things on the ledge there. And you may be cringing with some of the things that I talk about because we all have different weak points. We all have different areas of our home that we clutter up. And an area that one person just clutters up might be an area that another person would never dream of cluttering up. Like you might never dream of leaving a plastic water bottle or an old shampoo bottle on the ledge of this beautiful garden tub that's supposed to be decorative, but we end up doing it, but that's okay because I make it pretty again when I clear that off and wipe it all down. And then I clean the actual inside of the tub when I'm draining the tub and kind of getting out of it, I'll scrub the sides of the tub. And also a little tip with a lot of bathtubs, depending on how they're designed, it's hard to rinse them out. So I do like to keep a 32 ounce cup handy for rinsing the tub because sometimes the the faucet isn't going to have the reach. I mean, usually it's not. And so you're going to want to use that cup to rinse the sides of the tub. Make sense? Again, I'm not expecting you to deep, clean the inside of the bathtub or the inside of your shower in this episode, but at least check for empty shampoo bottles, razors you're not using, any other trash and clutter that needs to be 
removed, and maybe set yourself up for success, meaning place some cleaner in there. Maybe place some shower or bathtub cleaner in your bathtub or on the ledge of your bathtub or in your shower and a scrubbing tool so that when you take your shower or your bath, you will have the right tools. And just for clarification, obviously you don't sit in your cleaning chemicals. When I talk about cleaning a bathtub while I'm in it, I'm talking about as I'm draining it, I will kind of stand up and start to clean the edges. Um, when I'm not in the bathtub a lot of, and I'm cleaning it from the outside, I'll use one of those tools that has the long handle. It's like the scotch bright like dish scrubber except like with a pole on it so that's another way to clean a tub but if you put your products in there for your next bath or shower you're more likely to clean it and then and then of course I want you to remove any clutter and don't forget to finish cleaning your bathroom by cleaning the floors And when I'm cleaning my bathroom floors, mopping or by hand, um, that's when I usually like to give the baseboards a swipe because they do tend to collect dust and grime. I think some of the reason for the grime is the products that we use, the sprays and things that we use in the bathroom when we're getting ready causes like dirt and grime to stick to surfaces whether it's your cabinets or your your doors. Speaking of cabinets, you may need to wipe down your bathroom cabinets. That's not something I do every single time, but those definitely get fingerprints and whatnot. You know, you could be touching your makeup and then touching a drawer or something. And then, of course, kids, if you have them. And then, of course, once you have cleaned your countertop, your sink, your mirror, your faucets... Um, possibly switch plates and doors and baseboards and you've at least put some cleaning products in the shower to clean it later. Once you've done all that, um, if your floors are dry, you can replace the rug. That might be the last thing you replace is your little rug or bath mat. But one thing you can do right away is replace your toothbrush holders and whatever items that you keep on your bathroom counter unless you're washing your toothbrush holder. By the way, you should occasionally dust the exterior of your bathroom's exhaust fan. You may need a stool or a chair to do that, but, you know, it could collect dust or or something. So um, don't forget to look up when you're cleaning. I am going to give you a few more minutes in the bathroom and then we're going to move on to straightening up your outer areas. I'm going into this day with a kitchen that's in pretty good condition so I'm going to talk about that part last and you may be thinking I'm not going to give anybody a tour of the back bedrooms and because you know you're not you may not be as thorough in cleaning those areas. Here's an idea. Do you have someone who you are close to? I mean, we all have certain friends and family members that we can talk to about cleaning, I think. There are some people who we wouldn't talk to about cleaning, but there are some that we would. For example, I can totally picture giving my sister a random tour, like, hey, I got every room in my house clean, I just want to show you how good the bedrooms look, like doing a FaceTime call with her and showing her, I could totally do that. So maybe if you plan to do that, or even for accountability, tell that person, whether it's your sister, your best friend, hey, I'm going to, you know, clean all the bedrooms. I'm, I'm My house needs a major overhaul and I'll FaceTime you when I'm done, you know, and maybe the two of you can both do the same. And if you don't have someone like that, that's fine too, but I'm just throwing it out there because you might have someone like that in your life. And just the thought of giving someone a tour, don't get me wrong, an in-person tour is more intense than (laughs) 
doing like a FaceTime or whatever. It, they're not going to see the dust, the dirt or whatever in a video call like they would in person. But we need these moments. We need these reset moments where somebody's coming over and we detail every inch of our home. I mean, it, that that's how I get motivated. And I'm not saying that I only clean when someone's coming over. Obviously, I clean all the time. But there's just, you don't go to the same level sometimes. You may leave some clutter. You may need, you may leave some boxes around the edges of your bedroom or something and just some unsightly clutter. Sure, you're going to clean your toilets. You're going to clean your sinks. You're going to clean your showers. But are you really going to give your bedroom the attention it needs without planning a future tour? Maybe and maybe not. Hopefully I've given you enough time in a bathroom or bathrooms, plural. Let's move on to your living areas. Again, this episode is designed for my current household needs. My kitchen doesn't need as much work today. So I'm going to talk about the front areas. One thing that I need to do today is thoroughly dust my piano I had kind of a blanket going across the top of the piano, the back of the piano, and then I put decorations on top of that. That's in my laundry room because it was dusty and I'm going to wash that. But before I put that back on, I plan to thoroughly wipe down my piano. So I encourage you when you're straightening up your outer areas to take care of any dusting that needs to be done. And sometimes repairs need to be made. There's a large painting that's basically above the couch and it's the the focal point of my living room. And I noticed it was drooping on one side. And then when I took it off, I noticed that one of the screws had kind of sagged down. So I basically asked my husband to put in new screws to where the old screw holes would still be covered by the picture, but that the picture would be level again. So, you know, be looking at little things like that. Again, in today's episode, we're looking at our home through the eyes of a guest or a person who you are showing your house to. And that was one of the things that I noticed. That picture was crooked. So look for any problems that need to be addressed. In any living room or family room, You're going to want to remove clutter from the floors. You're going to want to clear off end tables or side tables, coffee tables, and maybe you have some other piece of furniture, um, a display cabinet, or maybe a little dresser in your entryway. Um, My piano is in the entryway, and it serves as what I call a launch pad meaning I have a little basket there for keys. And if we're, you know, the keys always go in that basket, but if we're getting ready to go somewhere and I'll see the kids with just armloads of stuff, like they'll be grabbing their, especially for if we're going on a long drive, because we live in a small town, so we commute to certain areas and stuff. We drive a long way to church. We drive a long way to go to certain stores. So I will see my 11-year-old with his headphones and his Nintendo Switch, different things like that. And then I'll be like, okay, go go put those on the piano bench and then go brush your teeth and grab a jacket or whatever, you know what I mean? So we put things on the piano bench. We don't leave things on the piano bench, but when we're in the process of getting ready, that's kind of our launch pad. And of course, keeping the keys near the front door just makes sense. Not everyone has a piano. It's, you know, it's a huge expensive piece of furniture and you may not play the piano. But if you don't have a launch pad, I recommend having something by your front door to use as a launch pad. You know, it could be just a little table or a little shelf or something like that. Or maybe you just have a key rack and your launch pad could be that you set items on the floor. But I just don't like putting things on the floor. So our system is, hey, go put that on the piano bench so we don't forget it when we leave. 
Speaking of dusting, you may need to wipe out your window sills or dust your blinds. And I think sometimes we can procrastinate on cleaning the blinds because we think we need to do something really fancy like take them out and hose them off. And yeah, that's a good idea to do now and then, maybe for your spring cleaning. But doing something is better than doing nothing. And you could probably close your blinds and dust them off. Um, It will be less thorough, but it's better than not dusting them at all. So just throwing that out there. Uh, If you're all caught up on your outer areas, like you don't have clutter and you're just looking for things to do, then it may be time to do some deep cleaning tasks. Um, Dusting your fan if you can reach it. Um, Washing one window. I'm not really big on just washing all the windows at once, but a lot of times if you just pick like the inside of one window each cleaning session, eventually you're going to get the windows clean in your house that way. Sometimes, this is something I remember from when my kids were younger, beads accumulating along the sides of the hallway. I definitely don't have that issue now, um, but if you have little girls or even boys that are making little bead crafts, um, they can sometimes settle on the edges and your vacuum doesn't pick that pick that up. So don't forget to use your vacuum attachments to go along the sides of your hallway to get beads or other debris. Just something to think about. It's it's kind of a bonus chore. I haven't used that term in a while on this show, but I used to talk about bonus chores. Like if you're ahead of the game, do this bonus chore. You know, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is using your vacuum attachment along the edges of your hallway. But a lot of you don't vacuum while you're listening. Just an idea of something to work on later. Speaking of sweeping and vacuuming, when you sweep and vacuum, that's a good time to look for any stains or spots that need addressing. Um, typically whenever I vacuum my living room and hallway, I will notice any spots and then I'll take a spray as, you know, whatever favorite stain removing spray and a damp rag and I will clean that spot. Um, years ago, my mom told me, cause I, I used to have a carpet that was like off white and small children. My mom told me, you know, if if you clean a spot as soon as you notice it, then you're not going to have this many spots to clean. Um, don't get me wrong. We do own a shampooer and my husband does shampoo our carpets from time to time. But between shampoos, you want to do that spot cleaning if you have carpeting. The funny thing about carpeting, again, just be working on your outer areas. You You want to straighten up, wipe down surfaces, just do what needs to be done while I'm talking. But the funny thing about carpeting versus floors, it seems like whenever I have hard floors, I kind of miss having carpeting because it seems like it's easier to vacuum than sweep and mop. But then whenever I have carpeting, I long for hard floors. Um, I want to get some of that vinyl flooring that's out. Like nowadays you can get vinyl flooring that it could look like wood planks. It could look like tile. Um, I don't want to get the one that looks like tile because my house has a lot of tile. I have a tile entryway, tile kitchen, tile bathrooms. But I want to get the kind that looks like wood planks, I think. But I can't get it right away because when I told my husband about it, he's like, we're not doing the floors until we get new couches. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I guess first I've got to save up for couches and then move on to floors. And I used to not want the hard floors because of the sweeping and mopping, but carpeting just, I don't know, it seems to wear out so quickly. And then I get problems around the edges. I think I've talked about this in a previous episode But where the carpet, there's like an archway going into my kitchen and it's where the carpet meets the tile 
and the carpet has kind of shrunk back and left a gap there so I keep a little rug there well the same thing is starting to happen where my entryway tile meets the living room carpet so I had to just pick up a random area rug to put over that just as a temporary fix until someday we, when we replace the floors and my kids are like mom that looks weird I'm like you're just not used to it my mom taught me that when there's a problem area on the carpet you get an accent rug that's what she calls it so anyway we have an accent rug but I kind of like it I mean it, it adds a pop of color to the room so if there's a stain that you can't clean or there's a rip or a ragged edge on your carpet, consider getting some type of area rug as a temporary fix. I mean, when you're cleaning your house and you see a problem, you want to be able to rectify that problem because if you don't like the way your house looks when it's clean, you're not going to be as excited about cleaning. You're not going to be as motivated. So you may need to spend a couple bucks to, you know, more than a couple. Rugs aren't cheap, but you may need to spend a few dollars to fix some issues so that you're happy with the finished product when you clean. And obviously these accent rugs are cheaper than replacing the carpet, replacing the floor. They buy you time. Don't forget to straighten your couch cushions, your throw pillows, clear clutter, dust, wipe things down. I think a lot of times we tend to do more wiping in our kitchens and our bathrooms, but don't go too long without dusting every surface in your living room or family room. You may need to dust some picture frames or the, you know, wipe down the glass of a picture or maybe there's a neglected surface somewhere that you're not wiping down. And don't forget about um, these bonus chores, switch plates, baseboards. And you don't have to handle them all at once. You can just wipe one thing down and tomorrow wipe something else down. One of the goals of my show is to have you do your everyday tasks but also to always throw in something that makes a lasting impact. You know, something that maybe only needs to be done once a month or less, like wiping down your baseboard. You want to throw those things in so that you don't fall behind on housework. Maybe you need to dust a cobweb in the corner. Don't forget to look up, like I said earlier. Somehow we get used to our surroundings. Even if it's something that doesn't really look good and we don't look at it through the eyes of a guest. Um, hopefully you've straightened up your front areas. Let's move on to the kitchen. This was kind of opposite day. We're doing the kitchen last. Let's move on to the kitchen. If your kitchen is already super clean and that's why you picked this episode, you can focus on a different area instead like a laundry room or a random bedroom that you're responsible for or an office or just some other room in your home. But for a lot of us, we need to do some work in the kitchen. Maybe you need to empty, reload and run your dishwasher. Maybe you need to put away clean dishes in a drying rack, start your first sink load. Maybe you need to gather dishes from around the house first, but it's time to get some work done in the kitchen. And if your dishes are already done, Look around for some problem areas. I'll tell you right now what's bothering me in my kitchen. And I use the term kitchen loosely because I have a kind of a dine-in kitchen. And it, the kitchen and dining room are all one big room. But I call it the kitchen because everything that's over tile, I just call the kitchen. But all that to say that there's a desk in there, kind of in the dining room side of the kitchen. And that desk is super cluttered. I call it the school desk. Nobody really sits at that desk or works at that desk. It has a computer on it that's just really slow. I don't know why that computer is so slow. We haven't had it very long. Ideally, I need to take it into like Staples and have like the computer 
person speed it up or something. That's one of those procrastination things that I may never do. But um, the purpose of the school desk is mainly to store school supplies. And for some reason, we're starting to pile things on top of the desk all around that computer. So I don't know if the drawers have gotten, I say we, it's the kids. I don't know if the drawers have gotten too full, but that's something that I plan to tackle this week. I'll be honest, I may not address that issue today because my focus today is to quickly clean up my room that's already been deep cleaned and then deep clean both bathrooms but keep in mind, I'm also going to be babysitting my nine-month-old grandson at the same time. So that might be enough housework um, in light of that situation. But if I have time, either today or over the next couple of days, I need to deal with that hot spot, so to speak, fly lady term that I like to use, um, that so-called school desk in the kitchen has become a hot spot. I would like to get those drawers thin down to where everything can fit in the drawers and maybe there's a lot of trash that needs to be thrown away I don't know I need to go through that stuff and get that situation under control in there if you have dishes to do be working on your dishes and then of course you'll want to clean your sink the area behind the sink your countertop your stove tops bonus chores are going to include wiping down cabinets and of course, you may need to sweep and mop your kitchen floor. And another bonus chore, sometimes you need to get down on your hands and knees and scrub around the edges of the floor. But this is not really a kitchen-focused episode. So I'm going to give you just eight more minutes to do what needs to be done in your kitchen. Hopefully, that's enough time to at least get the dish, dishes done and give your surfaces a swipe. If you're not working in your kitchen... Another thing I'd like to recommend you do is walk through your entire house looking at it from the eyes of a guest. You can pretend that a certain person is touring your home or you can pretend that your house is on the market and you're going to have a real estate agent walk through and tell you what needs to be fixed. That can be a humbling experience, <laughs> okay? But, you know, just kind of assess what needs to be done and maybe make a list of things to chip away on. You know, make a list of problems that maybe you can't deal with today, but you'd like to deal with later. And my lists are in my phone because I'm going to misplace a list. Although I did kind of put a little clothespin clip thing on a bulletin board and the other day I made a to-do list and put it right there so that's something I can't lose but loose pieces of paper I will probably lose so a to-do list on something that hangs on the wall or in your phone could be could be handy you know, maybe you need an accent rug somewhere to cover a bad spot. That could go on your list. That would, something like that would go on my shopping list that's in the notepad app of my phone. I do like to keep a list so that when I'm out shopping and I just feel like I'm mentally exhausted and I just, what did I even come to the store for? I'll check that list before I head to the checkout. I mean, there's always something I need from Walmart, for example. And yeah, having a list in my phone is how I function. I know that doesn't really have a lot to do with cleaning per se, but I really recommend just doing everything you can to become more organized in your life. It just makes life so much easier. In fact, that that's one of the, the, the ways I draw motivation to clean is I think about the fact that if I can get out the door faster, that will make my life easier. If I can spend less time looking for things when I'm getting ready or looking for things when I go to cook, that will make my life easier. And I draw motivation from that because some of us aren't very excited about cleaning, 
but what we do want is for the rest of our life to go smoothly that can help you feel motivated to clean obviously cleaning is its own reward it feels good to be in a clean environment but sometimes we need even more motivation to get organized like have you ever noticed that when you're younger and just be finishing up your kitchen while I talk have you ever noticed that when you were younger um, or maybe you are young you care more about your outfit your makeup how you look than how your house looks and then the older you get like the house starts to matter more too and this is a generalization everyone's different but I feel like I see that in a lot of people I see that myself well what if I told you that having a clean and organized home is going to help you look better it's going to give you more time to fix up and you're going to be able to find your favorite outfits and you're going to get out the door faster if your house is organized. So the two do kind of go hand in hand. It's not like, well, either I'm going to look good or the house is going to look good. Those are not mutually exclusive. Those two kind of go hand in hand. Or maybe right now you're more focused on saving money. Having an organized home saves you money because when you can't find something, you end up replacing it, okay? But if you're organized and everything has a place, you're not buying duplicate items as often. Speaking of just living an organized lifestyle, if your kitchen's already looking good, maybe now would be a good time to take inventory in your pantry, see what kind of sides and ingredients you have, and then create a grocery list based on that because maybe you have things that are just sitting there because you don't have other components of that particular meal. Maybe you need an ongoing list in your phone. And I know there are special like apps for that and stuff, but I am just really into this certain notepad and it's a different notepad app than most people with iPhones use. Like mine is the one that's the color of that, le like a legal notepad. Kind of that, I don't know, beige color. And I'm just really used to that particular notepad app. And I can do a search for different notes. Like I can type in grocery or to do or vacation and access different notes in there. So that's definitely something that keeps me organized because my phone's always going to be with me when I leave the house. Hopefully by now you've done some dishes, wiped down some surfaces, maybe you need to sweep your kitchen, or if this is not a day that you need to sweep, maybe you need to tackle a hot spot, like I mentioned that desk. You know, maybe... Maybe there's something in your dining room that needs attention. By the way, special thanks to my financial supporters and Jessica financial supporters. We appreciate you so much. We don't expect anyone to support this, the show financially. Just listening to the show helps us. But we do greatly appreciate it when some people go the extra mile to actually financially support the show. Thank you for that. We sometimes have bonus content that only the financial supporters can see. However, we're never going to provide that when we're behind on episodes. Our main priority is producing a weekly episode. So if we miss an episode, we're not going to record one for the supporters. Those are extra. Those are addition those are in addition. If we've already done the week, weekly episode, we will sometimes do one in addition for the financial supporters. It's not every week. It's not super consistent, but it's just something extra that is available if you want more of a raw episode. Sometimes on those episodes, like we're actually cleaning while we talk and things like that. Anyway, most of all, just keep listening. I appreciate each and every one of you. And as always, happy cleaning.
I'll talk to you in the next episode.